Hi guys, so there there were a number of you that emailed me about um, problem 13 or, or something similar to problem number 13 in the 4.3 homework. So um, I thought it would be worthwhile just to go over this um, really quick, right, to make sure that um, you, you know um, know what to do for this, right? So I think what you guys were having the most trouble with was filling in finding the equation, right? So here, here's the equation. So notice here um, we have predicted percent yes, right? So I have my yes equal to, um, then we have a blank plus, we have a blank here, and this is times the um, students with limited English, right? So English. Oops. Let me write that a little better. All right, so this was English. All right, and this, um, just to be clear, this was yes, right? There was. So in other words, this is in the form y equals b plus mx, right? Where whatever goes in this blank, so this is this is my y-intercept, right? Whatever's in this blank is my slope, right? And this is my what I'm losing as my x variable, and then here is my y, right? So you should know this equation very very well, right? Um, you know, slope-intercept of a line, right? Um, you know, usually we have mx plus b, but this is the same thing, right? It means the same thing. So the important part is that when, when I put this into my calculator, I want um, in the percent of students who, who have limited English, I want that to be my x, right? So most of the time we use L, L1 to be um, x and L2 to be y, right? So here we want to put my x's here and my y's here, right? You don't have to, but um, that, that'll probably make it easier for you, right? So, well, I think what was confusing to you is when when you're given the data, notice these are just flip-flopped from what we're typically maybe used to, right? And that's okay, right? Our data isn't always gonna be given to us in the exact order that we want it, right? So this, this is my x over here, right? And this is my y. So when we when we do this in, in the calculator, right? You, you don't have to, but you might want to put this into L1, right? Oops. Right. So you might want to put all of this into L1, right? And put all of this into L2. Right. So let let me do that. So let me grab um, calculator. All right. So we'll go into stat and then um, go into edit my list. Um, and we need to clear these. So we can hit clear and down. Now clear it. Right. Oh, and I remember that I deleted um, L1 on accident in a previous video, and I sent you a link on on how to get that back. Right. Um, so I believe I sent that as an announcement. Right. So delete L on your calculator. So if you've accidentally done that, you can click on this link to this website, um, and it walks you through what to do. Right. So you go to stat menu and then select option five, which is a setup editor, um, and then uh, hit enter, and that that should put everything back how how it was, right? So if I hit stat and hit option five, setup editor, hit enter, and then if I go back to stat and then edit, um, now I have L1 back, right? So if I hit clear and then down, um, it'll clear L1, right? Well, remember I also showed you that you could go to second and then memory, and you could go to clear all lists, right? So you could do that as well. All right, 
So let me get one note back up here, right? All right, so I'm gonna be entering in the X values in the L1, right? So I can hit 7.2, um, 6.1, um, 8.5, right, 16.9, 16.5. All right, so then now we need to enter the Y's in, so we have 71.8, so forth, oops. All right, so you might, might be ahead, ahead of me entering these in, right? So doing this with an emulator on, on screen takes a little little more time because I can only use one hand. Um, So, um, you know, if I were doing this, I would just double check, make sure I didn't make any typos. So, um, let's check those real quick, right? So, 71.8, Alright, so one, those look good, one through seven. I'm going to check the last three, 16.5, 36.3, 3, 3, 3. 3. yep, so those look good, right, doesn't look like I made any typos, right, so I'd always double check that just to be sure, um, so then now I'm going to go to second quit, and then um, I'm just going to hit clear just to have a fresh screen, and then hit stat, and then go to calc, right, and you can actually use option four or option eight, right, I also posted an article about this, it makes no difference, right? The only difference is, if you remember, you know, you're thinking constantly about the equation y equals mx plus b, right? So the coefficient for x is your slope. So in option four, my slope is a, where in option eight, my slope is the variable b, right? Um, so that's the only difference. My variables are swapped in, in and they're in a different um, order, right? So it makes no difference. But since the question does ask it to be in this form, this is option eight, right? So it just puts the numbers in, in the order, right? That you're gonna type them in anyway, right? So it's really convenience. We don't really need option four and option eight. It's more of a convenience, right? So if I hit option eight, and then now it's asking me, oh, what do you wanna use for your X values? Well, I, I put that in list one, right? So I need to hit second L1, and then hit enter, and then um, my Y values were in list two, so second L2, enter. So we got that down, and then go down to calculate, and hit calculate, and there's my regression line, All right? So here's my intercept, here's my slope, right? Um, and it's telling, reminding me of the form, right, where B is the slope, um, and there, there's my R and R squared, right? So th those, those are all important, right? <clears throat> So we went, went over those at length, right? So to fill this in, right, we went around to two decimal places. So we would put, um, what, 68.29, right, as the answer there. And then here we had negative 0 0.39, right? So that's that. Um, and then here it says interpret the sign of the slope clearly, right? So it's so remember slope is change in y over change in x, right? Where y in this case is the percent of yes, and the percent of x is the limited with the English, right? So we need to put this in context. So it says for every additional percent of students who have limited English on average. 
the percent of voters who voted yes goes up by, right? Um, so we actually want um, um, goes down, right? So, but but what what is changing, right? My well, my x means for for every change in x, this this is the change in y, right? So we want to, so we want to, so option A and B are definitely wrong, right? Because it says goes up. This negative means it goes down, right? So I want, I want these keywords. Uh, so let's read, read these, see which one's right, right? So for every additional percent of students who have limited English, on average, the percent of voters who voted yes, um, it would be option C, right? Good. So then what would go here is just my slope, right? Negative 0.39%. And there's there's your answer, right? So it's e easy as that, right? So don't let the order, you know, um, frustrate you, right? All right, so hopefully this was helpful. Um, if you have questions, please send me an email. All right, so actually I noticed I made an error here, right? So it, the, the, the error is that, um, notice the keyword says the percent goes down, right? So let me, let me erase this. Let me grab my highlighter, right? So the keyword here is goes down. So when I say goes down and negative, that's like double negative, right? So we don't want that. So if you use the words go down in a sentence, then you shouldn't have a negative sign in, in that interpretation, right? So we would just enter um, 0 0.39, right? So that would be, um, it went down by 0.39%. But if we didn't use the term, um, if, if it didn't use the term goes down, right? So for example, maybe it just said um, the percent of voters changed by, then we could do 0.39%, right? All right, so um, that 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 is good good now.